Hello Booktube, my name is Kate, this is my channel Chapter Kate. Today I'm going to be doing my July wrap up. And this month I'm actually going to save the right month during my wrap up. Yep, it's July, not June. Last month was June, but I said July. Mm. I don't know what that was. I'm also in the middle of booktube a and there's a video challenge every day. Yesterday I did the cover recreation challenge, but I wanted to not just have a video with just that in it. So basically I did a discussion on if I'm a cover buyer or not, and then I also had the cover recreation in that video. Today I'm going to be doing my wrap-up, and then I'm going to be following it with the House of Books challenge. Let's just get into the books. Okay, that's why you're here anyway, right? So the first book is a book that I've actually been reading since May because <laughs> I'm terrible at readathons, and it was part of the Scallywagathon, a pirate sort of themed readathon, and it was Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. It is the like original like pirate adventure story. Um, it's a children's book. It's super small, but I just couldn't get through it. It took me forever. I talked about this in my slumptastic book video, or with all the books that put me into slumps. This is one of them. Um, I think the main thing about it was the language that was kind of used and a lot of it just wasn't super relatable. A lot of the characters kind of seemed dumb when they were supposed to seem smart. Um, there were no women in the book. I don't know. There's, there's some things I just didn't super like about it. But, um, I did finally finish it. I wouldn't really recommend it. I mean, if you're trying to read classics, go for it. I don't think I would ever read this again. I just wouldn't. I just don't even want to talk about it anymore. Okay, the next book is Only Human. It is the third book by um, Sylvan Neuville in the Themis Files trilogy. And this series is written in a series of like interviews and news reports and personal logs and things like that. So it's not written in a narrative. And that's kind of what drew me to it in the beginning, but also the way it looked because it looked cool when I first picked it up. But then I just really got into the idea of it. But it's, it's essentially kind of like Iron Giant meets Alien Invasion, sort of but also with a ton of political intrigue, and especially in this book, um, has a lot of the political interest in it. Um, but it's it's really fascinating series. I definitely recommend that you read it. They sort of find parts of these robots, they start putting them together, and they build this giant thing that's more of like a, something that humans can control, but they're not, their anatomy's not quite made for it. And there are other beings that kind of come in. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to talk about it a lot, but this was very well written. The third one took longer for me to get into, um, I don't know why there's a lot going on in this one. I think that kind of threw me off because the other two, it's kind of happened sort of slowly. You get piece, bits and pieces of the story as you go along. Um, this one is just all up in your face. It's really good, though. I still gave the entire series five stars. Um, I know a lot of people are kind of stingy with their five-star reads, and it kind of reminds me of those teachers that, like, wouldn't give you a 100 because they don't like to give hundreds. I love to give five stars to people. Like, if I liked the book and I enjoyed myself, it's getting five stars. If I didn't hate it but it was pretty good I'll give it four stars but otherwise it's getting five stars for me because I have no problem giving people their stars have the stars and then the next four books actually I read because of the retelethon I did really well during the retelethon there was actually only one book in the retelethon that I didn't finish and it's because I realized that it didn't quite fit the challenge that I intended it for the first book I read was Poison by Sarah Penborough this was supposed to be a retelling of my favorite fairy tale my favorite fairy tale is Snow White because I love the doors um this is a very dark retelling. Um, it is an adult fantasy book. I will say there are kind of like two main sex scenes in this. And they're kind of random. They're kind of just thrown in there. And it's weird. And I don't know. Snow White doesn't seem to have like a real personality of her own. Just kind of a perceived personality by other people. I don't know, but like there was there was some good stuff in there like the last sort of moments were really good But also it makes you angry. It's not a happy ending guys. I will say that it's not a happy ending And then for the challenge that was reading a gender flipped or queer retelling of a book I picked new boy, which is a retelling of Shakespeare's Othello by Tracy Chevalier and It takes place on a schoolyard and I don't really like the schoolyard. It deals with race um I read a lot of books that were very similar to this in like middle school and it, I just I couldn't get into it and then I also realized that it's not gender flipped and there's not it's not queer retelling it's it's didn't meet either of those challenges so I'm not sure why my google search led me to this um so I just didn't finish it and then I read the group read which was The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill um, a lot of people hated this book. It's a retelling of The Little Mermaid. Before the retelethon, it seemed like everybody that talked about it loved it. During the retelethon and afterwards, it seemed like everybody that read it didn't like it. I enjoyed this book. 
to be honest. I really did. I know there's a lot of bad stuff that happens in here and there's a lot of not okay things that happen. But there's a lot of not okay things that happen in a lot of books like murder and death and stuff. And I think that pretending those things don't exist isn't positive for anybody. Um, of course, everybody has their own opinions about books and their own reasons they may or may not like something. I personally like this. I really like the end. I like that there's this toxic thing where, um, like, the mermaids don't like these other beings called the Rusalkas, which are, like, women that drowned and became sort of a mermaid-type creature. Um, but they're sort of always out for vengeance against males. And at the beginning, the mermaids hate them, and they don't think that they're natural and things like that. By the end, they seem to grow sympathy towards them and realize that there's not, like, that big of a dif difference between the two of them. Um, Ursula is not super evil in this. She's not great, but she's not super evil. She sort of has, she's more relatable in it. And I will say that. Ursula's also like fat in this, which is kind of cool. Um, you, you, when you think about The Little Mermaid, Ursula's fat in The Little Mermaid as well. Um, and she's sort of stylized based on a drag queen. Um, in this, she's also fat and they talk about how that doesn't meet the beauty standards that sort of the Sea King sort of has for his subjects, but she doesn't really care. And I think that's kind of cool. I've heard a lot of people say there's fat shaming in this, but I, I don't know. I guess I just didn't see it as a fat person. I didn't feel shamed in this book. Maybe I need to go read it again. I don't know. But I really liked it. I gave it five stars. I, I really liked the end too. It made me want to kick somebody in the face. And then I read a retelling that was based in sort of my heritage. And a part of my heritage that I haven't explored ever because I found out it's new is my Danish heritage. And um, Danish mythology is basically just Norse mythology. So I read Norse mythology by Neil Gaiman because I love Neil Gaiman. And I wanted to see how his style fit with Norse mythology. And this is just a retelling of like um, well-known Norse mythology stories. And I really enjoyed it. It wasn't super anything... Um, huge because it's just stories that, you know, if you know anything about Norse mythology, mostly you've already heard, sort of. But, um, the way it's written was cool. So, I really enjoyed it. I really like the way the end is. I love things for endings. I love the way, if an ending is done well, that's what I'm going to remember. I also hate endings because I endings freak me out. But if it's a good ending, then I usually leave feeling good about the book. So, I gave it five stars. And then the challenge was to read a dark retelling. So, I read Lost Boy by Christina Henry. I've read her Alice and Red Queen, um retellings which are both in the same universe and I love her retellings they're very dark um there's a lot of triggering topics that are addressed in them so you know just be careful as you read it make sure you take care of yourself if you decide to pick them up and this one um Peter Pan sort of steals kids and it seems like he steals kids that are you know abused or kids that are in bad sort of situations and brings them to come play with him in Neverland um but he's a bad guy sort of he's got a lot of issues and in most retellings Peter is kind of the bad guy and the main character is Captain Hook and Captain Hook seems to be you know the good guy in a lot of things of course he doesn't go by Captain Hook in this he goes by I think Jamie there's a lot of death in it there's a lot a lot of death um and you kind of it kind of deals with the issue of growing up which freaks me out personally I have a lot of fears about aging um so I had to kind of face those. And also I found myself triggered by this book and during one part near the end while Jamie's remembering his past a little bit because the longer they're in Everland, the more they forget their past before. Um, and I've never found myself triggered by a book ever. I found myself triggered by images and I found myself triggered by sounds and situations, but I'm not usually triggered by reading. So I did have to get to one... So I did get to one point in this where that dealt with a little bit of um, sort of domestic violence and I did have to take a break from it so just make sure when you read Christina Henry her books are very well written but just make sure you take care of yourself because there's a lot of triggering content but I did give it five stars because it was a good book even though the ending was not happy a lot of these don't have happy endings and this one definitely didn't have happy ending but it was a good book I'm just like building my pile right here then I read Paper Girls volumes one and two I've seen these around and I loved the art style of them so I kind of picked it up because Graphic novels, I'm going to love the art style. If I like it, then I might grab it. Um, and I've heard a little bit about these, but not a ton. And this is by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang. And um, these books are really cool. At first, I got sort of a Stranger Things vibe. Um, and it's kind of these group of young girls, and they're paper girls. They deliver papers to people, and it's a big deal in the time period in which this is placed because it's mainly boys that deliver the paper. Um, but it starts off with that, and then it has sort of Stranger Things vibes. But then it had a lot of, like, time travel vibes. Um... So, time travel I love to read about, but also it hurts my brain, which is kind of why I stopped watching Flash, the TV series, because it's just timelines 
give me headaches. But they are really good. The first one really got me into it and really pulled me in. The second one, I got real confused because there's three of the same person and I just needed to... I needed a breather, but I have bought the third one. I just haven't gotten to it yet, but I really like the series already. I gave them both five stars. You're going to hear a lot of five stars from me, to be honest. If you don't like someone who gives a lot of people five stars, then you might not like my channel or my reviews. I don't care, though. I don't read for anybody else. The next one is Beyond a Dark and Shore by Jessica Leek. I picked this up because she lives in the same city as me, and I've never met her. She was a Barnes & Noble the same day I got this, but it was before I got there. And then I bought it and didn't realize she had been there and could have gotten it signed, and it didn't. But it's a really good book, and it kind of perfectly melds Norse mythology and Irish um, Celtic mythology, and in a way that's very respectful to, you know, several types of mythology. Um, and it doesn't, like, discount one or the other, it, which is kind of cool. And it doesn't even discount, like, Christian religion either. But it's really, really interesting. It does have a lot of YA cliches. This is her first YA book. Um, there are a lot of YA cliches, but it's a really interesting and fascinating read. There's a lot of power going on, and a lot of writers have kind of sort of they they sort of back away from like really big power and like making a character sort of overpowered they don't have that problem in this there's a lot of a lot of power which is kind of badass and i liked it so you should read it and you guessed it five stars then i read shadow and bone so i put this on twitter with a couple of other books and this is the one that y'all voted for for me to read so i read shadow and bone by lee bardugo it is the first in the grisha trilogy i love this book i love this world it's really well written i love the magic system it's still kind of building in my head it's not super you know there's some still some details that aren't super clear to me about the magic system it is a format that we've seen before in storytelling where like the main character doesn't have powers and it's very predictable that they gain powers and in the society the people with powers are you know a higher you know tier and then the others so it kind of has red queen vibes in that aspect um but i really enjoyed it it really drew me in i didn't even if there are some cliches in here i didn't mind them at all i was very entertained by it and i actually went immediately to the second book which i haven't been doing in for years I haven't really gone to like straight to the sequel so I did that and I haven't finished the second one yet but I'll get to that in a minute and then I finished Smoke and Mirrors by Neil Gaiman is a collection of short stories I don't need this anymore Whoop! there it went oh no my dog's gonna eat that don't eat it she likes to eat my bookmarks okay so then I finished Smoke and Mirrors by Neil Gaiman it is a collection of short stories and it's supposed to kind of involve things that aren't expected kind of like a magician show how there's like secrets and things that you just don't expect to pop up this, every story in this is fascinating. Even the story that's in the intro just, like, had me. I just loved it. So I actually started listening to this on an audiobook a couple months ago, and I just now finished it. And, because I, you know, I'll get distracted. And so I finally finished it. I saw a Tumblr post one time, and it talked about how Snow White, if you listen to the description of her traditionally, it's very much like you would think of a vampire. And that story is definitely in here. There's a lot of cool stories in here. There's also some awkward ones, like, about venereal diseases, but at the end, it gets cool. So I recommend it. I'm all for Neil Gaiman. I love me some Neil Gaiman. Five stars! And then we have Siege and Storm, which I have not actually finished yet. It was like 100 pages from the end when Booktubeathon started. So if I have like a spare moment during this week, I'll probably finish reading it. But I haven't had that moment yet. Then we have my Booktubeathon books. And I really wish this Booktubeathon took entirely place in one month instead of over two months. So my first book that won the coin toss was um, Beautiful Chaos by Robert M. Drake. I've gotten halfway through it. Actually, a little bit more than halfway now. Um, and I love the poetry style. I, I find that a lot of things I don't really relate to. And there's also, like, a lot of poems that sort of celebrate codependency a little bit. And I don't like codependency. I'm a, I work in a therapeutic environment. I'm not going to like that. Um, and then there are also, like, little poems that get on my nerves. Ah, I found it. So there's a line that said, um, I knew because women like her were born to start fires. Awesome line. But then it moves to the next line born to change men born to end men no woman is born for a man so i guess that's why i didn't like that i don't know maybe i'm looking at this from a sensitive lens but i just i didn't like that line i don't know but i am going to finish this i accidentally left it at work yesterday so i didn't get to finish it at home so i just went ahead and moved on from that to scott pilgrim's precious little life volume one if you haven't seen scott pilgrim the movie I'm not really going to talk about this because I'm not finished with the series, but if you haven't seen it, you really should watch it. This is basically like line for line the movie with a couple of extra things 
put in there. The humor comes through so easily on this and I loved it. And now I'm on House Moving Castle. I started the audiobook today because it's the, actually the only book on my TBR for this readathon that I could find an audiobook for. So I've seen the movie for this, but as soon as I finish this book, I'm going to watch the movie again and it's going to be great. There are wizards and talking fires and all kinds of magic-y stuff. And it actually gives you a lot of insight into ageism. So between that last section of video and what I'm about to do, I had to take my dog out and it's raining. The world and myself are both thoroughly hydrated and I'm freezing. So <laughs> we're going to do this really quickly. Okay, so no I'm crooked. It's just going to be that way. I don't really have like a plan for this. I have a pile, but no plan. I had an idea, but like I kind of experimented with it and that idea is no. It's garbage. Garbage. Um, so I'm going to try and use my <sighs> um, stop watch here and see how it goes. Okay, so I have 30 seconds on the clock. 30 seconds is a really short time, Monica. I don't know if you're aware of that, but it's not a long time, but I love you. So, we'll forgive you for it. Okay. Okay, we're gonna try it. Go. here on House Hunters is a nice layer of, I don't know, graphic novels with a, a base, a foundation of Dr. Seuss with some Norse mythology, Aesop's Fables Oreo, another Dr. Seuss and a Pink Panther, and then some Robert Beattie to top it all off. And that's all for my July wrap up and book two with on challenge day number two, House of Books. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to include fragile things, but I was going to top it off with fragile things. It's got a house of cards on it. But I forgot because of the terror that is building a house of books and everything falling everywhere. I'm scared that I'm going to, like, bend up my books. I need to go take that down, like, now before I have, like, too much anxiety. So, if you'd like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm done pulling up a fight